some analysis on where Tunisia and the region stands today. Let's speak to Sarah Foyer. She's an expert on North Africa with the Washington Institute. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us. Let's start with Tunisia. Has Thank the revolution of five years ago served the Tunisian people as they'd hoped? Well, it's a mixed picture. Um, I mean, there's no question that uh, for many, if not most, Tunisians, um, the degree of freedom that they enjoy today is just no comparison to what life was like before the uprising. Um, and politically, I think at least at the national level, there has been real progress. You have a popularly elected parliament, uh, political parties now of varying persuasions. Um, so the, the political side looks fairly good. Um, on the other hand, the economy is still in pretty dire shape. And so that means that for many Tunisians, uh, particularly Tunisians who are living in the interior parts of the country where, as, as the segment recalled, the uh, uprising began, for Tunisians in those parts of the country, they really have not seen much change in the last five years. High unemployment, uh, labor disputes, and a lot of frustration, a lot of disillusionment. So it's a mixed picture. And uh, Sarah, how much are Tunisia's security forces still a problem, though? Well, uh, one result of the uprising was that the very extensive uh, security networks uh, and security apparatuses that had been uh, operating under Ben Ali um, sort of fell apart. Um, and on the one hand, you could say, well, that's, that's a good thing. I mean, Tunisia was, in many respects, a borderline police state. Uh, nobody really had much privacy. Um, police torture was, was pretty widespread. And so on the one hand, you can say, well, that's a good thing. I mean, the country needed to have security services that were much less intrusive. On the other hand, what that has meant uh, is that the state does not have as good a handle on, for example, um, the people and the goods that are uh, traveling across the borders. Tunisia is unfortunately in a, uh, a neighborhood where um, on the Algerian side and on the Libyan side, you've got a very problematic neighbors. And so without a, a, a competent security force, you have much greater risks. Okay. Quickly, sir, if you can, how much does Tunisia stand alone in its relative stability, at least, that it's experienced since the Jasmine Revolution? And might Libya catch up now that a peace deal has been signed? Well, Tunisia still, I think, stands virtually alone. I mean, among the countries that experienced some real upheaval, Tunisia is the only one that remains on a recognizable, if I would say bumpy, path uh, to uh, a full-blown democracy. So there's no question that uh, Tunisia is, is the outlier here. And the question about Libya, it really remains to be seen. I mean, you know, the, this process in Libya that's been underway now for over a year um, has had its ups and downs. This new agreement that was signed is, at the very least, symbolically um, important. On the other hand, until we see that um, really all of the parties on the ground in Libya, armed and unarmed, um, will agree to abide by this agreement and fully implement it, um, until we see that, I think Libya is going to remain very chaotic and, as a result, a continued threat for Tunisia. Okay. So we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us live from Washington.